Hello, and welcome to this instance of Feature Friday, which will focus on dynamic tables. I'm your host, Gabriel Mullen. I'm a sales engineer with the state of California public sector. And on today's Feature Friday, we're going to be tackling dynamic tables. Let's get started. So dynamic tables are an easy and declarative way of defining a continuous and automated pipeline that's cost effective and low maintenance. It allows us to operate on data in deltas as data is being delivered to our raw or source tables. So we can stream data into our raw tables and then dynamic tables will process that data based on a target lag time that allows our end consumers to be receiving the most amount of data in a very cost-effective manner. The challenges we're solving with dynamic tables is to reduce the complexity of developing continuous real-time pipelines, to simplify it in a way that's easy to use and manage, to reduce the cost of managing a real-time pipeline. Our consumers usually want data as up-to-date as possible, but there's always a trade-off between real-time data ingestion and processing and giving the business the most cost-effective up-to-date data. And so dynamic tables are meant to be the glue between those two mindsets and make sure that it's uh, manageable and cloud native so that we are working in a way that is seamless with the rest of the platform instead of having to add additional tooling that makes pipelines often brittle. So a dynamic table uh, uses a simple declarative definition in order to define the end state of what we want our data results to look like. And there's a couple of different components. So first, uh, you create the quote, dynamic table, end quote. Uh, so from a syntax perspective, that's pretty straightforward, just defining a new table type. Uh, right underneath that is our target lag. And this will be very important. We'll talk a little bit more about this in our demonstration. But the target lag is meant to define the amount of freshness that we want our dynamic table to represent. So that can be one minute, it could be 10 minutes, it could be 24 hours. Um, and this service level uh, would be based on our what our expectations of our consumers are. A dynamic table also uses a virtual warehouse. So you can see there, bring your own warehouse. So it allows us to consolidate different processes. So that way we get a, the most cost-effective uh, set of compute. And then we can use any SQL query or Python query as part of our dynamic table. And when we query that dynamic table, we get materialized results. Uh, so we're not having to reprocess a view and expend all of the compute in order to process uh, new data. Instead, we're just querying the materialized results. And so it's super fast to be able to query a dynamic table after it's been processed. There are a couple of different refresh modes. Uh, so we recommend leveraging auto, which allows Snowflake to determine which of the refresh modes it should be using based on some heuristics that are running under the covers. Uh, but you can manually force either a full or incremental refresh. Uh, so what Snowflake will attempt to do is make sure that all your refreshes are incremental. Uh, usually there's a first full refresh when you first create that uh, dynamic table uh, and then incrementals following that. It is the incremental part of the refresh mode that makes dynamic tables cost effective because instead of bulk processing the fullness of all of the data, we can work on the data as it's being delivered into the data platform. So the key features of our dynamic tables is being declarative. So we're not having to orchestrate a lot of layers. We're defining the end state and, and starting and ending there. We can have very low latency of freshness for our tables if we want. So keeping our data consumers up to date. We support SQL and Python as part of our dynamic tables. Uh, the automatic, the, the orchestration of the refresh process is handled by Snowflake. So that way you're not having to define cron jobs or Windows tasks to make sure that all the bits and pieces 
um, are linked together. Dynamic tables can be hierarchical in nature. Uh, and we get a full set of observable dashboards and metrics as part of the feature. So different use cases that um, are applicable are IoT data sets, uh, cybersecurity, uh, retail, healthcare and life sciences. A lot of these are IoT focused uh, for real-time data streaming into the platform. And as a sales engineer who supports public sector, um, you know, IoT devices that monitor either the roadways or water and air in the environment are great use cases for dynamic tables. So what is the difference between a dynamic table and a materialized view? One of the key important differentiators is the fact that a materialized view is based on top of a single table, so no joins, whereas a dynamic table enables joins between different tables. Uh, materialized views are always up to date, uh, whereas dynamic tables will be up to date based on a defined lag. And so that tends to make materialized views a little bit more expensive in relation to dynamic tables. Remember, dynamic tables are meant to be cost effective, uh, where materialized views are always up to date. And so if you have a really chatty table or a lot of churn with inside a table that has a materialized view on it, uh, then the materialized view uh, always needs to constantly be refreshed. So dynamic tables help to make that a little bit more cost effective by reducing that. A dynamic table is essentially the combined streams and tasks that Snowflake has offer, offered in the past. And so why not just use streams and tasks? Uh, well, streams and tasks can offer more control. So if we need that granular level of control, um, we can individually use streams and tasks to, to do so. But dynamic tables are meant to make that process easier to use. So we're combining those different attributes of streams and tasks into a, into a single object, dynamic tables. So the streams and tasks, we've got lots, lots more objects to have to worry about, manage, and maintain. So the different use cases that dynamic tables support, um, business intelligence, so um, giving our data consumers the most up-to-date um, data without having to reprocess a view every time a user hits that view. Dynamic tables materialize the results, so queries are faster and not having to be reprocessed by every single user. And also change data capture, so again, just delivering a freshness of the state of truth to our end users. Obviously, streaming analytics, um, being able to pull data in, enrich it, use it in conjunction with our data quality functions and data metrics, slowly changing dimensions as data is being delivered, making sure we have a historical record of that data as it's changing. And then as leveraging it in cooperation with our data sharing capabilities. So we have a data share, we're receiving data through that data share. Maybe we have our own processes as data consumers. We can use dynamic tables to identify the changes of the data inside that data share and then do some work on top of it. Um, maybe throw that into a slowly changing dimension so that we have that data in a historical capacity. Our dynamic tables team has done a phenomenal job of focusing up a lot of the metrics that are created as part of the dynamic table orchestration through uh, the SnowSight UI. So it makes, there's a huge amount of transparency and auditability that's inside the product itself. Uh, so we have the actual list of refreshes and we can see here in this screenshot, whether it succeeded or if it failed, uh, we can see how long the current lag time is and when that's happens. And so this gives us a great starting point for troubleshooting any dynamic tables that might be having an issue. We get a great amount of lineage as part of the product. So we can see both upstream and downstream the dependent dynamic tables or tables that are fueling the processes end to end. So we can see what the downstream and upstream effects are for changes. And this also allows us to restart the chain of events from a particular point. So we don't have to rerun the entire chain. Uh, if something fails in the middle, we can restart just that individual cell and all downstream tasks from that point. 
and then we get uh, some great averages and analytics about our dynamic tables as a whole, um, whether those are part of like a schema or a database uh, and how they're doing, how they're being processed uh, in the platform. Uh, and, and like I mentioned, all of these can be manually refreshed and we can suspend and resume them as necessary. So if we need to, to stop an entire chain of events, we can pause the root node and the downstream tables won't fire off. Okay, so let's look at a quick demo. Uh, I'll be using the quick start from uh, our getting started with Snowflake Dynamic Tables, and you can grab the link here if you'd like to try it yourself. Okay. So starting at the beginning, we just have some scaffolding. We're creating new databases and new virtual warehouses. And then we are also creating some functions using Snowpark in order to use Faker to deliver some synthetically generated data. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run all the scripts. Again, we're just running some setup, uh, generating some sample data sets. And then at the end here, we'll get a quick look at what the uh, tens of thousands of records uh, look like. So there we go. Our last table here has some data in it. Um, so we have three date. Uh, we have three tables. So if I uh, drop down here to the end, we have created a customer info table. Uh, so these are the, our raw tables, right? We are streaming data into them as an example. Uh, these are not dynamic tables, they're standard tables. We have our production stock inventory and we have our sales data. So let's look at our dynamic tables. So first I want to set my, my context of my worksheet and I'll create my first dynamic table here called customer sales data history. We're going to set a lag as downstream and we're going to process this dynamic table using my extra small warehouse. So we are assigning it to a particular compute cluster, which allows us to potentially co-locate additional processes and make it uh, very cost effective. And you can see we have a select statement here that is parsing out our semi-structured data using our SQL dot notation. And we're also interjoining it over to our sales data. So remember, one of the key value adds of dynamic tables is that we are allowed to do these individual joins. So I'll go ahead and create that dynamic table. And let's look at the results of our dynamic table. So here we get uh, some results. We can see that there's some data here and let's look at the number of rows. Uh, so we have 20,000 rows in this customer sales data history. Before we move forward, I do wanna to move to the documentation because I think there's a great illustration in the docs uh, underneath our dynamic tables refresh documentation that highlights some of the strategies uh, about the, the target lag. And so I wanted to point out that currently we have our target lag set to downstream and so our dynamic table is currently not going to refresh until it has another downstream table that then invokes the freshness of that data so with our downstream with our target lag being downstream um, once we created the dynamic table we materialized the results once but it's not going to refresh in the future because of this target lag here being set to downstream. The customer sales data history is going to wait for the dependency of the downstream table and look to that for what its freshness should be. And this is how we're allowed to create essentially um, a DAG that is processed and hierarchical in nature. So uh, let's go ahead and create our second dynamic table here called sales report. And we can see here that our lag is one minute. And so the previous dynamic table will now look at this table uh, because we are going to call it from this uh, table here. And so we create our sales report. And so um, now with our sales report, we had 10,000 records. Uh, and so very quickly updated to 20,000 records. So with a data refresh of one minute, Snowflake will, will watch for the data as it's being delivered and then refresh between zero and 60 seconds in this case with a, a somewhat guarantee of around that 60 second marks. 
And so um, to kind of see this in action, let's go to our dynamic tables or, or see it uh, in, in our reports here, our observability. So we can see in my account, uh, I've got a ver uh, various states of dynamic tables. I was looking at my demo database here and we were looking at our dynamic tables. So you can see that I have two dynamic tables uh, that are their current lag is 29 seconds. Uh, their target lag is one minute and we can see the uh, association that is this guy's waiting for the downstream uh, table to fire and it's it's inheriting that one minute target from the dependent table now if i click into one of these tables we can see uh, the graph of how these are connected together and so our customer sales data feeds into our sales report as does our product st stock inventory and uh, so we can see that it succeeded and the it succeeded within 96 percent of the current target lag which is one minute and we can see the the refresh history over time so super fantastic um, great auditability great transparency uh, with these dynamic tables now you can start building your own continuous data pipelines just like that Thanks for joining me on today's Feature Friday.